So one technique that I, I noticed throughout the film is, is the use of, of glass and shooting through glass and shooting, using mirrors and reflections. I mean, is, is that, uh, can you tell us a bit more about that? Um, yeah, I really like it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I, I, don't, I don't know, I mean, it, not so much like a theoretical explanation, but I mean, as you said, I mean, to create some sort of distance and to look upon life at a distance, you know, sometimes also can create some sort of intimacy, I think, you know, I mean, yeah. you have the feeling that you see people's life go on and, and a distance, and, and, and I think it creates a nice dynamic because, you know, you film through glass and you see life going on, and that's certainly, you know, you're there with your camera, and, and it creates a, creates a dynamic, I think, that you can use as a photographer <laughs> sometimes. And, and likewise, another technique that, uh, so particularly in, in the scenes around the school, when mm -hmm. kind of mid scene, lights would go on or go off. Mm -hmm. And there's a beautifully lit scene, Robert Gruesome scene, with, with the boys hung upside down in the changing room. Yeah. And uh, the accomplices. And, yeah. And they have two different rooms with the light going on and off. It's just, it just looks, I mean, how, how do you go about lighting that? Um. Um. And not, not in a very specific way. I mean, no. You know, lights go off and <laughs> they go on and they switch to on and off. <laughs> okay, so um, we should open up to the floor now. I've uh, taken up enough time. We've got any questions on the floor? The microphone is going to be passed around. I have to use that. I have to, so. <laughs> okay, fair enough. Um, it's the second time I've seen it, and I found it as exceptionally beautiful as the first time. Um, I made me think also of Todd Higo. I don't know if you know him, the stills of Todd uh, who? Todd Hedo. Yeah, yeah, Todd Hedo, yeah, or Hedo. Yeah, Hido. Hido. yeah, yeah. I, I have actually his books, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I didn't have them back then, but of course, I mean, it would be hugely, immensely inspiring. You mean the guy that has very long shuttered times? Exactly. Yeah, it's mm -hmm. beautiful. I, I, lo I love this film very much, yeah. But what I wanted to ask was, um, there's a wonderful economy to the way you frame and shoot mm -hmm. and, and how you approach coverage. Mm -hmm. And I just wanted to see if you could talk a bit about the process you go through with the director mm -hmm. in establishing the coverage of the scene. Is it intuitive? Is it pre planned? Well, I mean I mean, strangely enough, it, it I mean a lot of things are pre planned because they involve a lot of um, they involve a lot of, you know, uh, uh, people like like post people, etc. etc. But but I mean a lot of things. I mean a few of the things that I uh, like a few of my favourite scenes from the film, they were they were not pre planned in, as such as that we that we had had the precise storyboard, but you know, we took time in the morning in a way to to work out the shots, and that's also something when you work with kids, you know. I mean, you can plan and you can make storyboards, but of course, you cannot press uh, you know a child into the into the sort of the logistics of a storyboard. So so in a way, it was very nice. We we went to the set in the morning and we started to feel out uh, a scene and and rhythm and so on and and. And also Thomas, because you, yeah, of course, it's very important, you know, that, that you have a director that has this ambition to, you know, sort of give a scene its own rhythm uh, rather than to sort of cut and not to make those decisions. So very we we, we we started by by a vague idea and then laying a track, laying a a, a long track, and and and, and we we start something that we have sort of thought out, and and then we would find out that it doesn't work at all, and then you know, kind of we. We try something, and you know, we, we, we turn the camera left, and we let somebody coming in from the left side or the right. I mean, uh, you know, you sort of start um, improvising your way forward until you find 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 some sort of a key to the scene. You know, I mean, until you you feel that the cuts are in a way sitting at the, the right spots, and and in that way, I mean, we didn't plan so much, or we we, we did plan much, but in in that way, I mean. It was very important to let that rhythm of scene sometimes, um, um, you know, start to come alive in the morning and then work on it, you know, sort of halfway through, through the morning, you know. But you need some sort of ambition to, to not, uh, not make too much shots or not make too much coverage, you, you know. To, I think Thomas was also was very interested in, 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 in. in uh, yeah, in, in having the camera be part of that whole sort of ry rhythm making machine rather than, than cutting, and, you know, at that level. I mean, of course, a lot of beautiful, pretentious shots had to bite the dust, uh, you know, uh, that we thought were, were genius uh, when we were shooting it, but, th but they, they were not so genius when they <laughs> suddenly were on the, in the editing, uh, you know. <laughs> 
And it, just briefly, it's, uh, I was very struck by the way that you combine quite wide shots with extreme close ups mm. and develop the intimacy which trains the loss of the race overall. Mm. Um, so, really enjoyed it. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you.